So today we are solving a system of equations by elimination. All right. Now in previous videos, I showed you that in an ideal situation, the amount of x's or the amount of y's match up in the two equations, meaning one's a positive amount and one's the exact opposite but a negative amount. And notice we do not have that situation in these two examples today. We've got 3x and 5x. Ideally, it would be 3x and negative 3x because then we can add the two equations together and eliminate all the x's. But we can't do that here. Also in a previous video, I showed you a situation where we could just multiply one equation and then that situation would happen. But again, we don't have that situation here either. We can't easily multiply 3x by something to get negative 5x. And we can't easily multiply 2y to get negative 7y. We can multiply by negative 3.5, but I'm gonna show you a different method instead of multiplying by decimals or fractions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both equations. And we're gonna multiply it so that, in this case right here, I'm gonna make the x's match up, all right? So you have to think to yourself, what are we going to multiply them by? Well, I've got 3x and 5x. Let's make them 15x, all right? So I'm gonna multiply this top equation by negative five. And I'm gonna multiply this bottom equation by three. So that I'm gonna end up with negative 15x from this first one, and I'll end up with a positive 15x from the second one. So let's see that. Negative five times three x is negative 15 x. Negative five times seven y is negative 35 y. And negative five times 41 is negative 205. On the bottom one, three times five x is 15 x. Two y times three is six y. And 20 times three is 60. But now you can see why I multiplied the numbers by what I did. Because notice, I've got my negative 15x here and my positive 15x there. Now, could I have multiplied it by something to match up the y's instead? Definitely, I could have done that. I could have multiplied this top one by negative two and the bottom one by positive seven. So I would have had negative 14y and positive 14y. It's your choice. Either way will work and they'll both get you the same answers. So do whichever one is easiest for you. But in this example, I decided to try the x's. All right, so let's do the x's here. So I matched them up. I've got negative 15x on top, positive 15x on the bottom. When I add them together, guess what? I've eliminated all my x's. You get zero x's. All right, now let's do the rest of it. Negative 35y plus 6y is negative 29y. On the other side, negative 205 plus positive 60 is negative 145. All right, so this is a pretty easy equation to solve for y. I'll just divide both sides by negative 29. When I do that, 29's, negative 29's undo each other, I end up getting positive five. And if I want to get my x value, I'm just gonna put five back into one of the original equations. I'll pick the bottom one, it's a little bit easier. You should get the same answer no matter which equation you put it into. I'm putting it into the second one because they're smaller numbers. I've got 5x plus 2 times whatever y is, in this case y is 5, equals 20. And simplifying this bit, 2 times 5 is 10. All right, so if I solve this equation, I can get x. So let's subtract 10 on both sides. I am getting 5x equals 10. And divide both sides by 5. I end up getting x equals two. So I just found my solution. X is two, y is five. All right, but really that first step is the key to the whole problem. Trying to figure out what we would multiply the two equations so either the x's or y's match up. What you're looking for is a common multiple between the two, prob uh, the two equations, all right? You're trying to find a common multiple for 3x and 5x so that you can work with it. Although it's not exactly a common multiple because you need one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative. But that's kind of the thinking you wanna to use to figure out what to multiply by. Let's do a second example. And this time let's match up our y's, okay? So in my second example, I've got 8x plus 9y equals 65. 
7x minus 6y equals 43. And notice, there's no easy number I can multiply 7 by to get 8. And there's no easy number I can multiply 6 by to get 9. So I'm going to have to multiply both of them. Okay. Now, in this example, I said we were going to match up our y's. And actually, it turns out to be pretty strategic to multiply the equations to match up the y's. Because the y's actually have a common multiple that's a little bit easier to work with. I've got positive 9y and negative 6y. Notice, first off, one's positive and one's negative. So that makes it a little bit easier on us because we want one to be positive and one to be negative after we multiply it. So we don't have to worry about any multiplying by negatives here. But for 9y and 6y, their common multiple is 18. So if I multiply that top equation by 2, I'll get positive 18. And if I multiply the bottom equation by 3, I'll get negative 18. And then they'll match up, and I can eliminate them. So this will be perfect. So let's do that. All right, this top equation, 8x times 2. 16x, 9y times 2, 18y, and 65 times 2 is 130. For the second equation, again, I'm multiplying this one by 3. 7x times 3, 21x. Negative 6y times 3, negative 18y. Again, strategic. And 43 times 3, 129. All right. So when we did that, it comes out perfect because look, my y's are going to eliminate. So let's add them together. So 16x's plus 21x's is 37x's. 18y's plus negative 18y's leaves me with no y's. We've eliminated all the y's. And 130 plus 129 is 259. All right, now we can just solve for x. Divide by 37. We end up getting x equals 259 divided by 37 is just 7. All right. Now, to get y, let's put x back into the original equation. I think the first one's a little bit easier because then I don't have to deal with any kind of negatives. So I'm just going to stick it in for, oops, not for y. We're putting it in for x. x is 7. So we're going to do 8 times x, in this case, 8 times 7 plus 9y equals 65. All right, solve this, and I've got, I've got, uh, got y. 8 times 7 is 56. All right, to solve for y, I'm going to subtract 56 from both sides. I end up getting 9y is equal to 9. Divide both sides by 9. I end up getting y equals 1. So we just found the solution to our system. x is 7, y is 1. All right. So there you have it. Really, the key to this whole thing is kind of planning ahead. So that way, you can either match up your x's or match up your y's and then eliminate them. All right, look for common multiples. Sometimes you get lucky and there's an easier common multiple. But if there isn't a common multiple that's a little bit smaller, you might have to just multiply it by the bigger number. All right, 3x times 5 and 5x times 3 to get your x's to match up. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.